newlyweds Tara Derman and Andy Cahill live in New York City. Tara is a children's book author, and Andy is a former emergency medical technician who now works in finance. We had a kind of typical New York couple's life, going to work, being exhausted, always wishing for more time to do what we really love to do in life. And what we really wanted to do was travel around the world. So we both decided that we would quit our jobs and leave shortly after our wedding. Most of our friends were buying houses. We decided, ah, who really needs a house? Wouldn't it be better to leave and go and travel for a year or two years? So Tara and Andy put their careers on hold and head south. We went clockwise around South America and then back up through Central America. There's so much to see out there. We traveled through Patagonia and saw incredible mountains in the Andes. We saw Iguazu Falls and Angel Falls. And we met lots of terrific people and ate tons of delicious street food. We were pretty much having the time of our lives. Six months into their global adventure, they take a break to visit their families for the holidays. We went home for Christmas before going off to see Africa. It's always nice to come back to the United States after traveling for a long time. I was definitely looking forward to having Christmas at home in America, and we were looking forward to the hot water coming out of the taps. Little luxuries like that that we had taken for granted. But among all the comforts of home, something unexpected is awaiting this adventurous pair. It's the week before Christmas, and the couple is visiting family at Andy's mother's home in Terre Haute, Indiana. We were really excited to reunite with everyone, and suddenly I just get this strange pain on my scalp underneath my hair. It just lasted for a second or two, and then it went away, so I didn't think too much about it. But later that night, the pain returns. We're getting ready for bed, and I feel the stabbing pain again. This time, it felt kind of like this hot needle was stabbing me there. I wondered if possibly I might have picked up head lice. Head lice are parasites that feed on human blood. They are usually transmitted through direct contact with the hair of an infected person. I really didn't like this idea very much because I just, I don't like bugs, they freak me out. I asked Andy if he would mind taking a look at my scalp. And I groggily said, okay. I looked, but there weren't any lice that I could see. For Tara, this comes as welcome news. At least then I knew that I didn't have some sort of bug crawling around on my scalp or else he would have been able to see it. I did feel a little bit relieved. But Andy does discover something else. There were two red bites that looked like they were mosquito bites that were a little inflamed. They were a little red as though they might have been infected, but nothing to be overly concerned about. Everything seemed to be okay, and I quickly fell back asleep. For the next four days, Tara tries to ignore the red bumps until Christmas Day rolls around. The whole family had gathered for Christmas dinner, and I'm getting the stabbing pain in my head again. I was concerned about what was going on. So when Andy got up to go to the bathroom, I followed him. I grabbed him in the hallway and said, hey, I'm still getting these stabbing pains in my head. It's getting worse. Can you take another look? Tara leads Andy to the bathroom, where he re-examines the bites on her scalp. They became slightly larger in size. But during our travels, we got bit all the time by mosquitoes, sometimes by spiders or by ants, which were all fine. So these two small mosquito bites really didn't worry me. But Tara remains troubled. I know that mosquitoes can carry different diseases. So I wondered, could I have some sort of infection in my body, like malaria? Malaria is a parasitic infection of the blood caused by a single-celled parasite called plasmodium. Transmitted by mosquitoes, the infection affects an estimated 216 million people worldwide each year. When left untreated, it can be fatal. At this, Andy said, what are you crazy? That's ridiculous. I was bothered that she was spending so much time trying to think about what was causing these two little mosquito bites to hurt. It wasn't that serious. But I suggested maybe you want to use some of the antibiotic pills that we have. Tara spends the rest of Christmas masking her pain from Andy's family. 
seven days later, as New Year's Day rolls around, the couple travels to Long Island in New York to visit Tara's family. Andy and I are in the living room with my parents. We're watching some TV. I didn't even want there to be a chance that they would notice that something was going on with me. So I just excused myself and said I was really tired from our trip that day, and I went off to bed. Andy was asleep beside me, and the pains were getting so intense that they would actually wake me up. Tara continued to wake up during the night, and when Tara wakes up during the night, she wakes me up during the night, and I don't like anything that wakes me up. So between that and her saying repeatedly that these mosquito bites were really hurting her, I became more annoyed than concerned. I was a little bit annoyed that he wasn't taking me so seriously. I kind of felt like now I really was on my own with this problem, and it's just really starting to ruin my time with my family. The next day, Tara takes matters into her own hands. Since Andy and I didn't have health insurance, it was time for me to start searching the internet. I just started typing in search terms like Central America, tropical, stabbing pain, mosquito bite. I finally came across this forum where people had come back from Central America and they were getting these stabbing pains every few hours. I took a look at some pictures and my heart just dropped. I was completely horrified. I got Andy and I said, I think I figured it out. You have to come take a look at this website. I said, look, this person and this person and this person, they're all describing the same thing. So I thought I had botfly larvae in my head. The botfly maggot is a parasite that feeds off its host's flesh. I said, that's crazy. You have a couple of mosquito bites. You don't have bugs in your head. Knowing quite well that she has a fear of bugs, but also fully believing that it made no sense that she could have bugs living in her head. I wanted to prove to him that I wasn't making this up, that I really did have these things in my scalp. So Tara urges Andy to review the information. This website said one way you could see if you actually had these was to put a little bit of Vaseline over the top and they would come up to try to breathe. So I said, okay, well, this sounds like fun. Despite his reluctance, Andy, who's a former emergency medical technician, proceeds with this mock operation. So we dab Vaseline on these two mosquito bites in her head and I stand there staring at them. I'm making comments about how there's nothing coming up and this has been fun, but that everything is fine. All of a sudden, after about 30 seconds, I said, oh my gosh. This little worm popped its head up through the Vaseline. Much to my surprise, it turned out that she actually did have botfly larvae living in her head. I just burst into tears, and I was grossed out that these things were living inside of my scalp. Inside Tara's skin, the botfly larvae are feeding off her blood and flesh. The larvae are covered with jagged spines. As the creatures burrow into her scalp, they cause excruciating pangs of pain. 